Hello, and welcome to another deep dive episode on the Total Space Network. Do you know which organization found water on the moon and sent the mission to Mars orbit under 100 million dollars? I'm Mikko, the host of Deep Dive Fridays, and today you will learn about ISRO. Let's drill into the details. Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, is the National Space Agency of the Republic of India. It's headquartered in Bengaluru and it operates under Department of Space. So that's basically what NASA would be for United States or Roscosmos for Russia. ISRO is one of six government space agencies in the world which possess full launch capabilities, deploy cryogenic engines, launch extraterrestrial missions, and operate large fleet of artificial satellites. The Indian National Committee for Space Research was established under the Department of Atomic Energy in 1962. In 1969 the name was changed to ISRO as the organization kept growing. In 1972 ISRO moved under Department of Space. ISRO's primary launch site is Satish Dhawan Space Center, where almost all of the rockets are launched. It was also formerly known as Sriharikota Range. ISRO built India's first satellite, which was launched by the Soviet Union in 1975. About five years after that, ISRO successfully put one of their own satellites into orbit on their SLV or satellite launch vehicle. The rocket flew only four times with two successes and had a payload capacity of just 40 kilograms. The rocket flew between 1979 and 1983. Next up on the list was Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle or ASLV, capable of putting 150 kilograms to lower orbit. The rocket was launched four times, which only one was totally successful. It launched between 1987 and 1994. Next up, we have a workhorse that is still flying today, PSLV, or Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. This is the most flown Indian rocket, totaling to 53 launches, of which two failed and one was a partial failure. Latest failure happened in 2017, when the fairing didn't deploy, leaving payload inside the fairing. But it's worth mentioning that the total failure before that happened in 1993, which is about 9 years before SpaceX was even founded by Elon Musk. So it's a proven rocket with a long flight history. First launch was in 1993. PSLV has multiple variants, currently with 4 active one retired and one future variant. Payload to lower orbit is 3800 kilograms. PSLV has flown many interesting missions, which we'll go over soon. Next up is Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle or GSLV, with a payload capacity of 5 tons to LEO. This is India's second biggest launcher. It has flown a total of 13 times with 3 failures. First flight of the Mark 1 version was in 2001, and Mark 1 was retired in 2010, and that was around the time when Mark 2 was unveiled, and the Mark 2 is still considered an active rocket. Last but not least, we have the biggest rocket, Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark 3. It can lift up to 10 tons to lower orbit and 4 tons to GTO. The rocket's maiden flight was in 2014, and in total it has flown four times, all being successful. All of the rockets have been expendable, but just like almost everyone in the space industry, they are also planning a reusable rocket after SpaceX has proven the concept. At this point, it's worth going into the details of some noteworthy missions. First up, we have Chandrayaan-1 which was the first Indian lunar probe, and it was launched aboard the PSLV XL rocket in October 2008. 
and Chandrayaan-1 operated until August 2009. The mission included a lunar orbiter and an impactor. The moon impact probe separated from Chandrayaan orbiter and struck the South Pole in a controlled manner, making India the fourth country to place its flag insignia on the moon. The probe hit near the crater Shackleton, ejecting subsurface soil that could be analyzed for the presence of lunar water ice. The location of impact was named Jawahar Point. The estimated cost for the project was only 53 million US dollars. Orbiter was intended to survey the lunar surface over a two-year period to produce a complete map of chemical composition at the surface and three-dimensional topography. The polar regions are of special interest as they might contain water ice. Among its many achievements was the discovery of widespread presence of water molecules in lunar soil. Chandrayaan-1 operated for 312 days as opposed to the intended two years, but the mission achieved most of its scientific objectives. Maybe the most interesting mission is the Mars Orbiter mission, also called Mangalyaan especially this year with three arrivals to the Red Planet. I already did deep dive episodes about United Arab Emirates and Chinese Mars missions, and we had a 90-minute live stream about NASA's Perseverance rover with Dr. Graham Lau. Check those out, links are in the description. The Mars Orbiter has been orbiting Mars since 24th September 2014 and it was launched on a PSLV rocket in November 2013. It's India's first interplanetary mission and it made ISRO, the fourth space agency, to achieve Mars orbit after Roscosmos, NASA and the European Space Agency. It also made India the first Asian nation to reach Mars and orbit, and the first nation in the world to do so on its maiden attempt. This year, UAE and China accomplished the same thing. The mission is a technology demonstrator project to develop the technologies for designing, planning, management and operations of an interplanetary mission. And a funny side note, an illustration of the Mars Orbiter mission spacecraft is featured on the reverse side of a currency note in India. The price of the Mars Orbiter was around $73 million, which is the cheapest Mars mission to date. The orbiter is still working in the orbit of Mars, and India also has a second Mars mission planned for 2024. What do you think? Will it fly next to a starship? Tell me in the comments. PSLV has also done a couple other interesting launches. One was on 15 February 2017, which successfully deployed 104 satellites in sun-synchronous orbit, tripling the previous record held by Russia for the highest number of satellites sent to space on a single launch. Record lasted quite a while until 24th January 2021, when SpaceX launched the Transporter 1 mission on a Falcon 9 rocket carrying a whopping 143 satellites into orbit. ISRO has also launched Astrosat on a PSLV rocket. Astrosat is a multi-wavelength space telescope. There could also be a successor Astrosat 2 in future. GSLV Mark III has a couple of notable launches under its belt. First is the Crew Module Atmospheric Reentry Experiment, or CARE, which is an experimental test vehicle for the future orbital vehicle called Kaganyan. It is a human spaceflight capsule that will start ISRO's crewed flights. The spacecraft is being designed to carry three people. Another interesting mission is Chandrayaan-2, which is the second lunar exploration mission by ISRO. It consists of a lunar orbiter 
and also included the Vikram lander and the Pragyan lunar rover. Unfortunately, the lander and the rover didn't make it, but the orbiter is still orbiting the moon. According to a failure analysis report submitted to ISRO, the crash was caused by a software glitch. ISRO may reattempt a landing in 2022 with Chandrayaan-3. Seems like software is hard like rocket science. The main scientific objective is to map and study the variations in lunar surface composition as well as the location and abundance of lunar water. So, that was a quick look at the ISRO and its most notable missions. It's pretty amazing what Indian Space Research Organization has accomplished over the years, with a budget that is a fraction of NASA's budget. So, what do you think about ISRO's accomplishments? Tell me in the comments. Also like and share so we can continue producing the content. If you would like to do more, head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash total space to join our amazing group of patrons. Anthony Mann, Warhawk, Adrian Moisa, The Angry Astronaut, Howard Walker, Sammy Oscuro, What About It, Jisuan and Sebastian from To The Future, Gio Bagliari, Framrick, Susie R and Marco. Thanks for supporting us. You can also check out our website at totalspace.net. There is also merch for the shows. You can find all the links in the description. Thank you for watching. I've been Mikko, the host of Deep Dive Fridays. Have a great day.